So, I've been doing a lot of shooting this this afternoon, and as disappointed as I was, not disappointed, I that's not what I should say, but um, after trying out the 24-inch Crossman barrel on the um, 2289, and definitely seeing an increase in velocity, but ultimately deciding I, the weight of the gun, the balance of that particular gun, um, the awkwardness of the length of the barrel on that particular gun versus the increase I was seeing in velocity from that particular gun. I just didn't think it was worth it. I did go ahead and put the 14 and a half inch barrel back on it. I do like the compact nature of the gun. Um, the balance of it, especially while pumping, you know, I find it much easier to pump, believe it or not, with the 14 and a half inch barrel. It's just overall balance um, that I, I really do like it. I mean, even if I had a choice between um, a really nice 18 inch barrel in this one, the 14 and a half, I'd probably stay with the 14 and a half. With that said, I did head out to the garage with the 24 inch barrel and my chamfer tool and my drill press and put a nice larger chamfer on the barrel port that was measuring right at 250 width because of the curvature of the barrel um, lengthwise, it'll check well over 250, but 250 wide, you know, it's kind of, it's more like an oval than it obviously is a circle. Um, putting a chamfer on a radius is going to end up in that, like that. Um, but because the OD of the tubing that I use for transfer port making is 250. I need that chamfer in width to be at least 250 to get a nice seating surface for this. And after doing that, I came down, um, I took the 18 inch barrel back off of the KTHPA. And with everything off, I fired a couple of shots um, and everything seemed to be popping with a lot of power. Um, there's no barrel. It's just simply pushing air out through the transfer port. So it got me to thinking, I, I go, it just doesn't seem like the air that is coming out of the valve is equaling the air that's making it into the barrel that somewhere from the valve to the barrel is my issue where I'm losing a lot of air and uh, not necessarily too sure how much the actual that breach has to do with it. I, I, I you know, I was pretty confident that that cupped washer in place of the cracked out plastic and the front breech bolt, you know, we're making a pretty good uh, clamping surface of the front of the breech. So the only other thing feeling that way, the only other thing that can translate into uh, affecting the air getting from the valve to the barrel would be the transfer port. And it did seem to me that the breech very easily was sitting evenly on top of the hammer tube. You know, just, I was dry testing, uh, installed the 24 inch barrel into 
that replacement breech that I was using the cupped washer on and uh, just resting it on top of the hammer tube. I cleaned up the top of the, of the hammer tube as best as I could just to get any debris of any kind that might be getting in between the bottom of the breech and the top of the hammer tube off of there. But I didn't like the fact that it was sitting so evenly, so easily. It kind of led me to believe that maybe the transfer port that I've been using uh, was a little bit too short. So pulled out the tubing, I cut uh, length considerably, relatively considerably longer than the transfer tube that was in there, which was this one. And sat it down, again, the barrel breech assembly on top of the hammer tube with the new longer transfer port sticking up out of the, the valve port. And it obviously was too long. It was, you know, pushing the front of the breech up quite a bit. So I removed it, I trimmed it down. I don't know if this is gonna come through. That's how much I took off the top of the transfer port. I used a brand new X-Acto knife, was able to get a much cleaner, straight, flat cut than the X-Acto knife I've been using. And re, I didn't reinstall the transfer port. And it seemed to be pushing up just slightly. It was getting just a little tiny crack of light in between the bottom of the breech and the top of the hammer tube. Now that's kind of, I guess, what you'd want to shoot for. Because after that uh, tapered front breech screw does go in, using the cupped washer and in, in, in clamping down, putting pressure down, it did close up that gap where there was no light in between the breech. So it is getting some compression between the chamfer on the barrel port and the top of the transfer port made out of this tubing. It is compressing the tubing somewhat which evidently gave it a much better seal. And if you take a look at the velocity I got, number one, the first velocity I'm gonna show was I, I didn't top off the KTHPA. I left it where it was, which was at 11 MPA. And got this velocity. So I was really pleased with that. I'm like, okay, this is sh obviously shooting better than the, the low 700s I was getting with the 18 inch barrel. Yes, probably a portion of this is because there's a 24 inch barrel on there. How much of this better velocity I'm seeing is because of the new transfer port? Well, Obviously, the most logical thing to do was to top off the tank back to 15 MPA and take a shot. Now, the first two shots I took, I had error readings for my chronograph. The third shot I took, so what I'm trying to get at is this wasn't fully at 15 MPA. It had been. I took a shot, error. I took another shot, error where it's at right now, but I did take a third shot and did get a velocity reading. It has dropped down to 13 MPA, but let me show you the velocity reading I got. Unbelievable. Uh, replacement breach that was cracked out at the hole that the tapered front breech screw screws into 
having to jerry-rig something. Uh, just taking a chance that it might work and I could make use of this particular breach. Made that cup washer. Did seem to be working. Wasn't giving me velocities. So simply a longer barrel and a replacement transfer port that's probably sitting exactly the way that it should be sitting has gotten me the highest velocity I've ever seen. Um, you know, I'm just at under 950 feet per second. Now, you can see the smile on my face from... The 2400 KT HPA. I got to put the uh, moderator back on. But I could tell, even with the error reading from those first two shots, the cleanness, I, I don't know how else to describe it, the crispness and the cleanness of the pop of air that was exiting the barrel. Um, really, I, I was confident if I can get past these stupid error readings and get a velocity reading from my chronograph, uh, it's going to be more powerful than it was. And it was. Uh, and you can see the jump in velocity between 11 MPA and probably something slightly above 13 MPA. I, bottom line is, um, hopefully I can get this to hold up I do have, uh, a, I forgot to mention uh, the BB experiment that I tried. I did get, um, this is before trying the 24 inch barrel, the 18 inch barrel was still on there. I was still getting low 700s velocity readings. Uh, the BB did stay epoxied to the front of the bolt probe for five shots. And then it came loose and shot out with a pellet. I could hear it as it hit the target. The two wax, the pellet followed quickly by the BB. So that did not hold up. So I, I waiting on a brass breech. I have ordered an extended bolt probe to be used with the KTHPA. And I've confirmed that with the proper cut transfer port and 24 inch barrel, what the gun is capable of doing. And I'm unbelievably happy. So uh, those are updates as far as the uh, KTHPA goes. Uh, uh, glad that the 24 inch barrel did make its way here. And it obviously does make a difference. So uh, I, I'm wondering, hopefully I can get a full topped off fill velocity reading, 15 MPA out of it, and really see how close to a thousand feet per second it's getting. But that's it guys, thanks for checking out this video. Stay safe and shoot safe. Looking forward to shooting this gun.